those Zoom mics, but it's been having some problems. With them. Tell me when it's on. Oh, it's on. Is that too loud? What they make the noise? No, nah, it's talk? fine. We should just talk loudly. Because this is also for this is a, this kind of mic. Yeah, okay. yeah let's just talk loudly, All like right, drunk people can just at a bar. Scream, you know? scream at yeah, each other. You're exactly. saying you know, this drunk Englishman volume. Okay. So, yeah, so basically, oh, here we are at uh, Hariharalaya uh, Meditation Center that Joel created and is uh, taking care of, nurturing right now. Um, it's a beautiful center, and uh, they're starting a retreat in a couple of days. So, uh, Joel, uh, what, what's, the, what's the main meditation technique that you use, that you teach here? Come back to the center come back to the source, relax back into the center through the stillness. Be still is the only instruction. That instruction is sufficient to last us for years and years of unraveling and such. Of course, we everybody wants something more complicated to hang on to and to play with, but the stillness is enough. So we try to keep it simple, just be still. And then there's, of course, I have the book, The Foundations of Stillness. Of course, we can, we can unpack that in multiple layers and ways of relating to the stillness, stillness in the body, stillness at the level of the breath and at the level of the desire and of the senses and the mind and reaction patterns and all of this. So, but at first, just a physical stillness, stopping the movements of the body and the mouth and the eyes then starts to slow the whole system down that we can enter into deeper awareness of the present moment. And then it just unfolds by itself and naturally, it deepens by itself. As we water the garden, the garden grows. No expectations about, we don't know which way exactly it's going to grow. So the, so the, for me, the meditation, again, this is this like recharging and reconnecting with the basic aliveness from being in, in contact with the source, this limitlessness, instead of being always stuck in the problem of the limited self, of trying to get what we want and avoid what we don't want. So then, <clears throat> from the be still, we have the three teachings, be still, be silent, and be simple, or be stupid. Being still, we can, is more obvious, you know, to stop moving the body. As difficult as it may be to actually do it, or as much as we may resist being still, then it's very clear what it means to be still. Being silent also is more or less clear how to shut our mouths we can do it we don't want to do it but it's possible to do it but this being simple or being stupid is very tricky because we've always been taught to talk and question and doubt and explain and justify and language so to be able to suspend our interpreting or conceptualizing and then just uh, it's a deep it's another level of stillness because there's always the tendency to want to label our experience or to categorize or to compare to make sense out of it and this is a terrible trap in terms of coming into the present moment, because the present moment is always unknown. It's flowing like the river. It can't be trapped. It can't be predicted. And all of our ideas and language and ideals are from the past. And so they're necessarily in contradiction with the present moment. So as long as we remain chained to the past, then it will be very difficult to flow in the present moment.
part of the trouble is that when people start meditating, they have these expectations from seeing pictures of people smiling, wearing nice clothing, and like it's like the tickling when the angels are tickling us and we're having a great time. And then this unreasonable expectation, then the, re the effect of the meditation, which is this friction, uh, which brings up all of the pent up, uh, blocked up uh, physical, emotional, and mental uh, phenomena, or the life experience. And then they're thinking that they're doing it wrong, or it's not working, or it's not for them, or something. So if we need to have the reasonable expectation. Meditation is more like a purgatory or like a purification through a burning, through the fire, the tapas, the heat, the friction that's produced through the energy being contained in the stillness. And then it brings about this kind of deep purification at the level of the, the nervous system and the organs and such subtle body and like this, but also the level of the samskaric patterns. And then through this process of purification and then concentration or gathering at the center, then it brings about this state of deep clarity and wisdom and peacefulness and love and beauty and power. Which is the natural, natural state, natural way. <laughs>